Hey everyone, welcome back. Larry here again to talk about something I have not yet done on video. Um, I posted pictures of, commented on about, but I haven't actually done, which was the topic of canning your beer. Yeah, yeah. What I have here is an October Design homebrew canner powered by a power drill. Keeps costs down a little bit. Uh, a lot of them, uh, the more expensive ones, have built-in motors in them. Uh, this was a sort of a unique, uh, low-cost design by, by October Design to come up with something that was uh, at a much lower cost point that could be powered with a regular household power drill. So, ha! Now, I've had this for about a year, uh, just over a year now, actually, and I've canned some beers with it um, since then, but I haven't canned a whole lot of beers, and there's reasons for it. I mean, honestly, canning is something of uh, an exception for me. I mean, for crying out loud, I... I've been brewing for 22 years or more now, and I have not um, ever canned. Uh, I used to bottle back in the early days when people used to bottle, right? And when I bottled, it sucked. Uh, bottling sucked. You had to wash, clean, and rinse so many bottles, and you had to drip dry them, sanitize them, you know, use them, cap them all, and everything like that. Uh, where, I, where I went to when I switched to kegging, you know, maybe over a dozen years ago, I never looked back the bottling again and if I ever needed to fill something up I would use uh, growlers or swing top bottles uh, much like some around here I can find later but anyway but uh, but since I've been kegged for years and I've been doing um, kegging all this time uh, at times uh, and a growler might be too much a, a swing top is fine but you then need to want it returned to you right you, you may not get those back because they're not cheap to uh, buy those uh, big sweet top bottles so an option came along about a year ago again where i got my hands on this oktoberfest uh oktoberfest october design uh hand-powered drilled home brewer system and they sent me a big box of uh, cans to go with it off of the camera here so uh i came across a need to can uh for the second time this year uh, the first time I did it, it was just for fun. This time I actually have a need for it because what I did is brew 10 gallons of bourbon stout. Uh, 10 gallons, that's across two kegs in my kegerator. I think I'm going to start brewing again relatively soon. So therefore I want to start moving this very high gravity, high alcoholic sipping beer out of, uh, at least out of one keg and uh, making room for an upcoming beer at some point. And I figured these heavy beer styles uh, age well, even in a can, I imagine. So I'm going to go ahead and can a bunch of these. It's, it's a little bit before Christmas time, and I want to give some of these out as gifts. <laughs> not to you, though. Uh, just kidding. Well, not really. I've only got so much to go around. I actually have people already calling dibs on this beer uh, who live local to me, as it is. So, so sorry, guys. But, uh, but that's my motivation for canning. I'm, I'm going to gift a bunch of these away uh, for, for Christmas. as yes, Christmas gifts. And another thing I'm going to be using probably for the first time on video is a Blickman beer gun. And I haven't, uh, I've, I've used that about the same time. I got that at the same time I got this thing because I knew I was going to be doing canning and the beer gun seemed to be a good option for that. So uh, uh, so I have that to, to, uh, to show as well. But uh, enough talking about what I got and what I'm about to do. How about we just go do it, right? So what I have before me here is uh, about 30, I think 30 12 ounce cans. Uh, ready to be uh, filled. They've already been sanitized in star sand solution, soaked for a few minutes and, and, and uh, drip dried upside down, as you can see here. And I am going to now fill these up with beer that is in my keg right over here in my kegerator. So, uh, so the way I'm going to do this is that since I have the beer already in the kegerator, I have um, a tap faucet that uh, it's got re removable nozzle so I can put on a ball lock post on it and then attach my beer line from the Blickman beer gun uh, from right from the tap and without having to open the kegerator door or pulling the keg out or anything like that. That's that's an awesome thing to have. Uh, so I'm going to just run the beer directly from the keg, uh, which I've uh, right, right to the beer gun. I got a CO2 tank right below me here, a five pound tank. I'm not using the big one for my kegerator. I probably could in the future if I add an adapter and split it off. But uh, for the time being, I have a small portable five pound cylinder below me here, attached to the beer gun as well. And I had to dial down the uh, gas now. So there's a difference here, right? I have CO, two different CO2 ta tanks going on, one to the keg and one to the, uh, to, to the gas on the, on the beer gun. 
So I had, as part of this, I've learned and read in hindsight after my first screw up with this <laughs> last year, is that you wanna lower the serving pressure on your keg. So, so like for me, my kegs were about 11 PSI um, pressurized and I serve at that uh, pressure. But for this, you wanna reduce it. Uh, recommendation from Blickman and others is up to about six PSI. And what that does is slow the flow of the beer down the line so you get less foaming coming out the beer gun and less foam in the can or bottle. So that's what I've already done in preparation of this. So uh, enough said, I got my, my, my Ryobi 18 volt lithium <laughs> drill here I've used for many years, ready to go. Got a couple of cameras all around, um, you know, here to to try to capture some of this for you guys i hope it goes well because quite frankly my first couple of times uh, using this canner uh were a bit of a struggle um part of it was learning uh part of it was just part of the process it's tedious um, i mean i mean canning is not a whole lot different than bottling right um but again i have a purpose for it and i'm about to do it so let's get on with it <laughs> so what i have here is the october design um homebrew a model here and uh it's pretty cool it's got like a little trap door here that opens and closes uh the, it's like a splash guard as well as it operates the uh, can to lift it up in, into position so essentially what i'm going to do is take an empty can which is right here and i am it, it's sanitized already i'm going to go ahead and fill it up put it inside this this thing uh with a with a lid so i got sanitized lids as well that go in the can all right goes on top of the can like that and that goes in the device you close it up you seal it up so let's go ahead and walk through it for real so what i have here it looks like a gun doesn't it this is the blickman beer gun and what you have here on the bottom is the gas going up into it and on the back end is the beer line going through so a little bit of a crisscrossing of, of lines below here it might cause me a little trouble here knocking stuff over but uh, for the purposes of filming this, this is kind of the situation I'm, I'm in. So be patient with me. But what happens here is that these, there's these little levers here that operate the gas, which is turned off. I got to turn it on. And a little trigger here that uh, opens a little spigot. Uh, here, me, little, this, little top, this little piece there, this, this little plunger to let, to let the beer out. So um, that's how it operates. And let's give it a go. I'm gonna turn on the gas first. So I got the gas on. Let's see if this sounds right. Yep, it's working. And if I squeeze this beer thing, it's not gonna happen because I gotta open my tap. So let me go do that. And the beer is gonna slowly fill the line. It's kind of stuck in the line because I don't, I didn't let the air bleed out of here yet, which is why this bowl is here. So what I have is a little bowl here. I'm going to try to bleed out the beer to fill up the beer in the line. Here it comes. There we go. So I just filled up the line. You can't see it off camera, but this long beer line is full of beer now. And it's primed with gas. <laughs> uh, and it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do here is, so what you do is that you start off by purging uh, the the atmospheric air out of here with a little blast from the co2 to displace the air so it's just a, hopefully just a cloud of co2 in the bottom of this thing it's not perfect it'll still be a mixed gas but be definitely dominant in the co2 rather than the oxygen so i'm going to let me get a shot of the camera here i'm going to give this a little burst for about five seconds one two three four five and then i squeeze the trigger and there goes the beer. See, I can't really show it too well. I should probably change my camera angle a little bit. But it's but it's filling up really slowly. I might turn up my pressure a little bit on the keg, uh, on the kegerator to the keg to make this move a little bit faster because it actually is going pretty slow. It's about a third of the way fill already, fill, uh, filled already. So let's let this go. And... Uh, See if I tilt this in here to see it. See, it's slowly filling. Yeah, I'm gonna need to turn up the pressure a little bit more, I think, guys. 
and that's one of the things about this. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit of fine tuning to get it to flow just right, to minimize the foam to, uh, as a, uh, on, on one hand, but also speed up the process on the other without too much foam. It's a, it's a trade-off. But when it fills up with foam like this, you, you want it to have a little bit of foam on top there to help purge out all the air. This is going back into my bucket of sanitizer for the moment. And then I'm going to grab a sanitized lid. And then I'm going to put the sanitized lid on the can. It's a push down on it. It's going to push a little foam out, which is all right. Uh, what that means is that there's no loose air floating around in there, which is good for preserving the beer and keep it from going stale. Got a little over a bit of a splash there, but it's all right. Now I can wipe it clean a little bit. I'll wipe it clean better later uh, when I get them all done. But for now, that's probably su sufficient. So then you take the, the beer with the lid on it and uh, go to insert it up in here. Push it against the back stop. Make sure the lid is on there really good. I'm going to close this down and it's going to clamp the lid in place with the spindle on top. So what I got to do is start this thing spinning. Then I got to seam it one direction and then seam it in the other direction. And then that, it's like a two part seaming operation. And that's it. Um, open this up, take this out, and ta-da! <laughs> no, uh, no spillage. So, unfortunately, it's got a little bit of beer spill on it. But again, I'm going to dunk or wipe all these down when they're done. But uh, it's full. It's cold. Oh, it's going to be delicious. So let's do that again. So let's see. So you can kind of see this is kind of a tedious operation to a point, right? You really don't want to do them all in a row and then come back and can them because by that point the foam subsides and now you have an air gap basically in uh, now in the top of your can so when you put the lid on you're trapping air back in there again which will steal your beer right so the so the goal is to foam up the beer all the way to the top put the lid on right away or or your bottle cap if, if you're bottling and cap it and put everything back down and, and like start over again so uh, that's so let's do this again so so that's the so that's the tedious part you got to do every operation one at a time on a per can basis, which means putting things up, lifting things down, putting things back in, moving things here, moving things there, grabbing this, cleaning this, wiping that, right? Um, if you had a helper, that would probably be a big help. I, f I wish I had a helper. Family, family, no, f no family here. It's just me. It's just me. Hmm. Maybe we should eat. Maybe we should watch TV. Hey guys. Wonder joints. You know what we gotta do? Toga, toga party. Toga! 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 Yeah, let's have a bachelor party with chicks and guns and fire trucks and hookers and drugs and booze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! All the things that make life worth living for. Ah! Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Back at it. Can. Right? Beer gun, you let all the all the sanitizer drip off. Now I'm using Star Sand Solution, so it's no rinse. So this is not a big deal, right? I, and again, I got the little lever here for the for the gas. One, two, three, four, five. And then now you can fill the can. Now uh, I gently squeeze the uh, trigger on this beer gun because uh, I learned the hard way the first time. I squeezed it too hard and this thing flew apart and it was spraying beer everywhere. Oh, that was brutal. Um, so it's not, <laughs> so that, that was a lesson learned. So now the foam comes to the top, it's just starting to crest. Oh, maybe a little bit more. There we go. All right, put this back in the bucket of sanitizer or a sanitized bucket at least. And uh, come back here, grab another lid. These lids like to stick together for some reason. It's all right. Also sanitized again. So I push the lid on. It'll squeeze out some of the foam, but that's what happens. It's okay. I don't mind it. Put that up in here again. Lock it in. Fire up my drill. Go one way with the 
the crimper. And there we go. I may even be able to do that quicker. Uh, once I get in the swing of things, it might happen faster. But there's the nurse seal again. Uh, you can actually see it sealed up real nice there. Turn it upside down. <gasps> Good, it didn't fall out. <laughs> All right, so it's another uh, success story. So uh, let's go ahead and get some of this going here, get this moving. I'll come back and talk about uh, some other things at, at the end of this. I'm going to turn up the gas. All right, I turn it up a little bit, a couple PSI. We'll see how that goes. Yep, it's moving faster now. So I'll get a little bit of more foam. And again, that's the trade-off. All right, foam. Lid. I'm gonna turn up the gas a little bit more. Apparently six PSI. Too slow, eight PSI, too slow. I might go up another PSI or so. <laughs> um, I think it kind of depends on the beer style um, that you're uh, making. I mean, this is a, um, a very heavy imperial uh, stout, a bourbon stout. So um, it's, it's a little bit more malty, a uh, little less carbonated, I think, or at least appears to be. Um, it's, just, it's not having any problem coming through the line and foaming up. In fact, I'm getting liquid almost all the way to the top uh, with very little foam, actually. So I want a little bit of foam. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up. All right, let's try that again. Oh, that's better. That's working great. It's moving, moving faster with a little bit of foam. I think this might be the right dial. It's doing great. So just like that. Put it on top. It's okay. I don't have to. So we have. I'm going to go this way to seam the one uh, seam operation, come back the other way and seam the other way. So let's, so let's go ahead and do that. And it's just that easy. Comes right out just like that. Beautiful. It's good to have the splash guard here <laughs> because it's just anything that comes up on the side, whoosh, it sprays and the splash guard thankfully catches and doesn't cover me with anything. Uh, although I do have to clean the inside of this thing when it's done. I'm going to boost the pressure one more time. I think I'm up to about 9 PSI now. It's almost back to where I started at around 11. Um, hindsight, I probably didn't need to go down to 6 like the instructions said. Well, maybe it's moving a little quicker, I suppose. Yeah, it's already starting to build up a little bit of foam, which is, by the time it gets to the top, I'm hoping that'll be better off than it was in the past, because I was getting beer all the way, I mean, the actual beer all the way up to the top of the lip with just a, with a skim of foam, which is like, eh, not quite what I wanted to go for. I wanted just a little bit more foam. There we go. I think that might work. Yeah, I just probably got like an eighth inch of foam on that one. Let's see the camera here. Come on camera. See that's about as much foam as I wanted on there. Looking good. All right. There we go. All right. So this is much better. I'm, I'm probably around 9 psi and it's filling of course incrementally faster than I first started at 6 psi. Uh, which is good. It saved me a little bit of time on, overall on, on the whole batch. Getting a little bit of more foam, which is what I want as my sort of my buffer between the top of the beer and the bottom side of the lid when I put it on to close up the airspace in there. So there is, there we go. It's, I mean, that's, that's working much better now. So I should be able to do that. And there we go. So I got a little bit of foam coming off, but that's okay. It's not like actual beer. Well, it's, it's beer, but it's, uh, not in its liquid form, it's foam form. Foam form beer? Last can. Boy, because my trigger finger is getting tired. <laughs> 30 cans is a lot to do. Um, for me, at least. That's the most I've done in one go at a time. I think the last time I did it was a 12-pack. 
and uh, 30 cans. Um, almost as tedious as bottling. Uh, makes me glad I still keg, but uh, this is definitely something that's worthwhile if you don't want to um, carry your beer to a party or give to somebody in a uh, glass container like a growler or a swing top that you want returned and never see again. This is the kind of use case where you can take these places, drink them and throw them away or give them away and not care if you get the, the containers returned. So to me, that's the advantage of canning. And that's exactly what my intent is here. And there you go. That's it. Final can. Looks good. And uh, so I got a whole 30 pack here. <laughs> I need to clean up and uh, put some labels on. And there you have it. 30 12 ounce cans of uh, homemade bourbon barrel stout. 30 pack. Um, so there you go. What do I think about the canning process? I have opinions. I know I've voiced them online if, or live streams if anyone's may have heard that. Um, it's not much different than bottling in terms of labor, cleaning, sanitizing, uh, filling, bottling, capping, whatever, uh, wiping down, cleaning everything up. It's still more work than the keg, obviously, but there are advantages to uh, bottles and, and cans over bottles over kegs uh, too. Again, um, th these are going out as either as gifts or to take places with me. They're disposable. I don't need to uh, worry about getting them back like I do for say a swing top bottle, much like this. <laughs> uh, I want these back. These were expensive. These go right into the recycle bin, right? So that's the advantage of them. Glad you stuck around to this point. Glad you maybe Learn something. Um, doing this, as you can, you probably didn't see this during the video, but um, I got faster and faster with it as the uh, cans uh, counted up and uh, got a little bit more quicker and efficient, but still, still labor intensive and tedious for one person to do. I'd suggest getting a friend to help you do this. One fills the cans, one, one, one actually seams them. Maybe a third uh, helper to wipe them down as they're being finished up. Uh, me, I'm doing this all on my own. And um, although I'm glad I got 30 cans, I still think I'm going to lean on my keg to drink uh, my own portion and just give all these away to someone else so, uh, or other people, not one person. Can you imagine me giving this away to one person? <laughs> not me. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you all next time.